Good evening. Welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. We have a show dedicated to hot topics, everything everyone's talking about. Of course, we got to talk about the Grammys, so stay tuned for that. But we're mind all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, of course, our official website, the Stephen Knight Show.com. If you'd rather watch us, go to our YouTube channel, the Stephen Knight Show. Please subscribe and comment. All right, well, we want to send our prayers out to the people of Turkey and uh, Syria who lost, they're saying about 2,700 people due to a massive earthquake that hit at 4 a.m. while they were, people were, most people were sleeping. So they're still derailing from everything and trying to still find bodies. I think they found over uh, 2,000 bodies so far, but a long way to go. And I heard that they're asking for international help and U.S. is sending over people to help with the search and rescue. So our thoughts and prayers to them. But switching gears, this is Black History Month, and Black History Month began over 100 years ago with a week-long celebration. Congress passed a law designating February 1986 as National Black Afro-American History Day, noting that this past February 1st would mark the 60th annual uh, salute to Black history. And so each uh, day, uh, each Monday for this month, we're going to highlight someone that you should know in Black history. So the first person is um, Bayard Rustin. Uh, he was an African-American leader in the social movements for civil rights, so socialism, nonviolence, and gay rights. So salute to him and do your, do your research. All right. Adam is stepping in for us because Nair is out today. But everybody, y'all good? Everybody doing good? Yeah. All right. Well, our question of the day is what is your most used emoji? I'll start with you, Ania. The crying laughing emoji. Oh, crying laughing emoji? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you, GK? I use a combination of, uh, what is it? It's heart, the prayer hands, and the power fist. Mm. What about you, Adam? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking through my phone. I don't really use that many of them. I, I wouldn't even think you did. <laughs> For some reason, I wouldn't think you did. Yeah, yeah, maybe I just uh, skipped a generation or something. But yeah, I, I maybe the smiley face. Uh, okay. I will say if it's Slack, because that's what we use at work. I use, uh, I have a custom emoji. To, to, it's called a Pika sheep. It's a Pikachu with a sheep body that's popping. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I had to pick the most used emoji, it would be this weird Slack emoji that I found one day when I started my job and said, okay, this is just going to be me now. So what does it mean? I, it's just, I use it like for everything. Like if I'm approving something and like, oh, that's, you know, like it's a congratulations when people make a oh, post okay. or yeah, it's a good news thing. I don't use it for bad news, but uh, yeah, it's random. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my phone, I just, yeah, I don't really get into the emojis. Okay. I use the roll eye emoji a lot. Um, and the, the one emoji that I absolutely hate, I think it's very passive aggressive is the thumbs up emoji. When you tell someone something, they thumbs up. I hate it, but <laughs> I think it's very dismissive. Like, gotcha. Yeah, I can see that. And people do it all day long at work. <laughs> Let us know, uh, what is your go-to emoji? All right. Well, the Grammys were last night and I watched it. That was a great, uh, a great show. Um, just to recap, well, what I did do is I recorded it so that I could go back and fast forward the parts I didn't care about. Um, but I thought Trevor Noah did a great job. Well, Beyonce, she broke the record for the most Grammy wins by any artist She when she won her 32nd uh, Grammy last night. Um, Harry Styles, Styles, he won Album of the Year for his album, Harry's House. Uh, and apparently the Beehive was not happy about that. <laughs> I saw some crazy things online. Uh, 50 years of the hip hop all star medley featured L. Cool J, Della Soul, Ice T, Public Enemy, Queen Latifah, Rakim, uh, Run DMC, Salt and Pepper, Wiz Benderella, Missy Elliott, The Locks, Grandmasters, uh, Flash, and Millie Mel, Big Boy, Busta Rhymes, Method Man, Nelly, Scarface, Lil Wayne, and many, many more. Uh, and I thought they did a great tribute to um, hip hop. Uh, Bonnie Ray, she won Song of the Year just like that. And she looked completely surprised. She was in there with Beyonce and Lizzo and some others, and she just looked surprised, but she won that. Uh, Lizzo won uh, Record of the Year. Viola Davis, she made history, earning a mm -hmm. Grammy for a memoir, uh, becoming the third Black woman to achieve the EGOT status, which means she has an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award. 
Now, Chris Brown, he made comments uh, after the singer or after the musician, Robert uh, Glasper, won Best R&B Album posted on IG. Gee, bro, who the F is this? Y'all playing Friday Motion. Who the F is this? But today he did go back and he said he uh, he shared a DM that he sent to this artist, pretty much apologizing. He said it was the the it wasn't aimed towards him. He said he did research on the artist and he said it's two different genres. They should have been in the same category. Um, and so some people they have respected his apology and he wished them all success and told them that he you know he thinks he's a great artist. Um, but he just didn't understand why they were putting them in the category that was mismatched. And so um, people appreciate the comments and people say it was a back end apology, but he did it. So did you all watch? What were your highlights? What did you think? I'll start with you, Chike. Uh, yeah, yes, I watched. And I thought that it was the best Grammy um, in a while. Mm -hmm. it, it was like, it, it's been quite some time since I really enjoyed the Grammys like I did. Then yeah. Kudos yeah. to them for putting off a good show. And and I, let me just say for the record, they say Quest Love kind of organized the whole hip hop section, the whole hip hop part. Kudos to him. Quest Love. Yeah. He's a genius brother. Yes, yes. And I just want to add, Robert Glasper is the GOAT. He has done production for some of your biggest artists. He is a consummate maestro, not a composer. He's a maestro mm. for the record. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam, did you watch? No, I did not watch. I'm actually catching up on everything. Uh, and I do want to watch the performances because uh, they do sound like there are some really good ones. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't get a chance. I, I will, like <laughs> I said, check it out. I, you know, I know it's explained every year, but record, album of the year, song of the year, I'm still kind of just confused about how those are all different categories. I know one's yeah. for the actual, like, whole thing and then one's for one song but then there's also a song so I, i'm still a little confused about that but it um it looks like it was a good performance yeah it was, it was really good really good uh Lin linnea did you watch um no i've only seen snippets but um the main snippet i needed to see was the uh hip-hop portion mm -hmm. of that yeah. um yeah. which was definitely a good thing to see um so congratulations to everyone who won um all that good stuff i'll probably see some more snippets maybe online on youtube because you know i am out of the loop since i'm not on social media and only oh, yeah. what pk tells me <laughs> yeah that's true that's true but I, I just thought it was ridiculous the beehive they were going after harry styles Beyonce has more Grammys than any artist ever. She didn't have to win everything. <laughs> and can I can I just alleviate some maybe some of the confusion for some of the fans because they no, thought one of you have an echo. Win. I'm sorry, one of you have echo. Either Lania, try hitting your your mute again like you had before. Now talk. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. So I just want to clarify. Beyonce did a record, which was uh, a pretty much a dance album, right? Yeah. <clears throat> she tapped into a genre, right? Harry Styles created kind of like original, not that Beyonce didn't create original new music, but she tapped into a genre that already existed. There were other artists that are in that genre that have made that genre popular. Mm -hmm. Harry Styles is pretty much um created uh his own new style in this genre so that's probably why he got the grammy over beyonce it, i don't think that she was robbed i just think that they probably weighed out the artistry and chose him over her sometimes you win sometimes you lose i think i think i hear some buzzing those uh, i know those bees are coming after chike she gave it a watch you. absolute I'm, chike I, be listen, careful I, I don't I don't feed into it. Listen, Beyonce is an excellent artist. She has the most Grammys that anyone has ever won. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. If I see bees on your feet, I'll know what happened to you. It's okay. <laughs> they, they hunted him down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one hey, thing I don't uh, yeah. understand. Her is... mom is my auntie Tina, so they can come for me if they want to. I have protection. All right. <laughs> I, one thing I don't get is how is Chris Brown still 
relevant and in the music. Like, there's, I mean, I don't know, there's just so many more talented R and B singers well, out there. How I does was... the how does the industry keep encouraging this uh, person to be around? Well, he has consistent hits, and you know, he released yeah, the album does. last yeah, but... year. Couldn't they find someone else? He's his voice is fine, but it's replaceable. Couldn't they just find someone else to uh, sing those hits, and then not deal with the controversy around this guy who's a uh, history of abuse? You I know mean, contra- just, you know, controversy sells. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. When you what you have say? Let me just hop in on this real quick. Chris Brown is an artist, he's an entertainer. That young man went through something back then that he's still being crucified for now. It's unfair, but he makes good music just like everybody else makes good music and he shouldn't be continued to be crucified, period. And I said the same thing that he said. I didn't know who this Robert Glasper was. I didn't, I'm just being honest. Yeah, um, right. So, but he deserves just as much as any other artist because he's been in the game just as long. He hasn't killed anybody. He hasn't done anything, anything, any other, anybody hasn't done that's in their world that's considered crazy or ridiculous or going through some things. That's just my little tidbit on that. And he's, I think he's incredibly talented. I think he's incredibly talented. Um, he's a great performer. They're calling him the the, the modern day Michael Jackson. Um, they, they had that huge debate last year about that. Did you see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But look, but after, so we found out um, that the Migos rappers, uh, Quavo and Offset, got into a physical altercation backstage at the 65th Annual Grammy Awards after drama brewed over um, the performance that they did, <clears throat> according to Radar Online. Quavo was upset, was set to take the stage uh, with the live rendition of Without You when the tension reached a boiling point. Sources said moments before it was about to start, they got into a heated brawl because Quavo stopped Offset from joining him on stage and refused to let him take part of the tribute performance, despite mm-hmm. the Grammys extending an invitation. Now, insiders said that Offset was not the aggressor. It has been a few months since Takeoff's sudden and tragic death and it appears that there's still animosity between the chart-topping artists following the fatal shooting of their cousin and group mate. TMZ was the first uh, to perform uh, the news about the fight. But Offset took to social media and said, this is ridiculous, never happened. That's like my brother. Y'all are crazy. He didn't use those words, but that's what he meant. <laughs> Let me ask you, um, uh, Adam, I know when, when my mom always said, where there's smoke, there's fire. And so if this is picking up on different uh, outlets, do you think something happened or do you think that Offset, this never happened? Uh, I mean, I don't know. They're so close. There's too much. There's a lot of history, right? So there's probably something that did happen. And it may have been something simple that really was nothing to start with. But uh, yeah, I'm sure they're just trying to kind of move past it and, um, you know, uh, keep things going. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, what are your thoughts on this? Um, so I know that there was something going on before, um, before everything happened and there was some friction within the group. Um, but at the end of the day, they're both still grieving. Now we don't know for sure that something went down because you can never really go by blogs like that, especially gossip blogs. Um, We don't know what happened. But at the end of the day, did it it happen? Like, did the um, performance happen? Yes. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters in regards to the, the other stuff that's on the gossip blogs. As long as they were able to get through that performance and pay the tribute um, to their, their friend and their cousin, then that's all that matters. Yeah. And it was a great tribute. Like the whole, that whole segment, it was kind of, it was sad, but it was a great tribute. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Did I ask everyone else? No. I'm the only I'm one sorry. else. <laughs> I'm sorry, GK. How can I forget so, GK? Go ahead. What are so, your thoughts on this? 
I kind of felt because Cardi B was there, I knew that he was in the building. I knew he was around. Yeah. Yeah. So when they did the tribute, I was actually waiting for him to perform on stage. And it was a very mm. beautiful tribute, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And when I didn't see him, and then I heard about the Conflama, I was like, oh, okay. Mm. Um, not the first time that we heard about some negativity between them. So I'm more leaning toward what TMZ is saying. Mm-hmm. And TMZ almost never gets it wrong, by the way. I don't know what yeah. sources they have. But they almost never get it wrong. <laughs> well, look, we'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back, find out about a middle school, a middle school in New York is catching heat for what they had on the menu the first day of Black History Month. And then the Hispanic woman, she uh, wins um, Miss HBCU at uh, Copen State University and social media re- reacts. Right back after this. <laughs> 